Well, hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to episode eight of the Black Entrepreneurs Institute show, as we are here with you again, live and in color. My name is Angela Hooper Minifield, and I am one of the four co-founders of the Black Entrepreneurs Institute, more affectionately known as BEI. And with me tonight, I am happy to have two of my fellow co-founders, the one and only Damian Johnson and the renowned and our featured voice for this evening's show titled Millennials in the Workplace, the Dr. Nicole Rankin, or as we like to say, Dr. Nick. So how are you guys doing today? Doing you know, fantastic. Doing wonderful. I'm excited. <laughs> Yeah, I've been really, really excited, Angela. I've been looking yeah. forward to having Dr. Nick take the stage. I know she is going to add tremendous value and you guys are gonna love her. You'll get to understand why we love her as much as we do because you're gonna get to see her brilliance shine through tonight. <laughs> Oh, Dr. Nicole, he's really amping you up. I know, really. I know the pressure, the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I am excited because I, I love uh, teaching and, and training on leadership development as it relates to our younger generation and how we can best engage them and connect them and just help them be better leaders. So I'm totally excited as well. So hopefully, Damon, I live up to the pressure. <laughs> well, we have no doubt. <laughs> Damien, you was reading my mind. I know Nicole, mm. she is going to bring it. But before we go any further, we can, we definitely want to say hello to our fourth business partner and co-founder, Cedric LaFleur. He's gearing up for some training that he is preparing for. As you guys know, this new school year is starting in some places. And so Cedric being the um, school uh I call him GOAT as the greatest of all times when it comes to working with schools and administrations and the children. He's in preparation for that. So he's not with us tonight, but he sends his regards. So one of the things we do as we look to create a show that adds value to our viewers is we continue to modify our programming. So one of the things that we knew was the fact that many of you really don't know us as it pertains to our given areas of expertise. So as such, we have added a new monthly segment to our show that allows us, the founders of BEI, to highlight our individual services and gifts. And tonight, as we've already alluded to, we will hear from Dr. Nicole as she shares content regarding millennials in the workplace. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I can say unequivocally that for years, almost every time I've facilitated a training, I've spoken at an event, I receive no less at a minimum one question regarding how do you manage millennials? So I say all that to say, if you or someone you know wants to get better in this space, or just educate yourself. This is definitely a show you do not want to miss. So let me encourage you to hit the share button, start a watch party, but I have no doubt that everyone and anyone that is interested in this topic needs to see this show tonight. So guys, before we get started, let's just talk a little bit about, you know, I've been watching some of the um, Empowered Living, uh, Another Seat at the Table mm -hmm. conversations over the past week. And I was just wondering, had you guys had an opportunity to catch any of those? Well, let me tell you, Angela, um, I tuned in yesterday uh, so uh, the sales training piece of that, Paul and Holly did an incredible, absolutely incredible sales training. And let me tell you, I am chomping at the bit to get out the gate and go sell this program. It was absolutely outstanding. They talked about uh, different language patterns, tonalities, the first four seconds. And, you know, I'm, I, you know, sales is my jam, right? I love sales because <laughs> when you're an entrepreneur, you've got to make the cash register ring. And so listen. The, the the training for another seat at the table changer, the sales training that Paul and Holly did yesterday, absolutely outstanding. And so you guys will get ready to go because this is the season and now is the time. Awesome. Awesome. 
Well, today's video, I did get a chance to watch. So what the Empowered Living uh, Community or Network is doing is they're having conversations from another seat at the table. And guys, today's conversation was about five minutes long, but it was talking about a scene from Remember the Titans and using it as an example of how the leaders on both sides came together and put their pride aside to, to, to help solidify the unity in the team. And so needless to say, guys, you know, I love football and I have to admit it. Remember, Remember the Titans is one of my favorite movies. And so the way that Josh has woven such relevant and relatable content into this program, I can tell you, I think it's phenomenal. And I cannot wait to get in front of my clients and my potential clients with this content. Absolutely. I totally agree. I'm excited. I'm already, even before uh, the information was released, I started preparing. They, as they said that when opportunity comes, it's too late to prepare. So you have to get ready. So I started already started talking to a lot of colleges and universities who is interested in this program. So I can't wait as well to get going and getting starting and getting this information out there. Awesome. So just, a, you know, a little bit, you know, oftentimes, you know, I'll see articles and things just really strike me as interesting. And so I thought this article really aligned with our topic tonight, which was the millenn millennials. And so a couple of weeks ago, there was an uh, article released by brookings.edu. And the article talked about the fact that the data released a couple of weeks ago from the Census Bureau stated that currently, now guys, I want you to check this out more than half of Americans right now are millennials or younger. It's stated that the combined millennial, Gen Z, and younger generations currently number at 166 million as of July 2019. And that represents 50.7% of the nation's population which is therefore larger than the 162 million Americans associated with Gen X, which is my generation, baby boomers, and the older cohorts. Now, of course, it also added how uh, these individuals, millennials and younger, are going to be, have influential roles in business and government. And it also spoke to the diversity of this group, stating that nearly half Millennials and younger identify themselves as a racial or ethnic minority. So now, Dr. Nick, we know you're going to educate us this evening regarding millennials in the workplace. But what do you think about the fact that for the first time, this group represents the majority of the U.S. population? I, I think it's an amazing thing that we definitely need to take note of because there's such a gap between generations from Generation X to our millennials. There's so much differences, right? So now we have a whole entire generation that makes up half of our population, but what do we do with them? How do we interact with them? How do we lead them, right? So now we're seeing these uh, obstacles and these challenges because now they're making up the majority of the workforce and the population, but how do we engage with them? So that is, I'm excited about talking about that tonight. So I think that is, is something to know, but we have to know what's the next step. Definitely. What about you, Damien? So what I think, Angela, is that what we're getting ready to see is a complete cultural shift, um, not just in the workplace, but in, in, in the entire world. I mean, at the point at which millennials are making up such a big part of the, the population and the workforce, we're getting ready to see that um, everything is going to have to change. Companies are going to have to adapt because because they're gonna be the dominant majority, right? Because baby boomers are, I think I saw a statistic that said that baby boomers are uh, turning 65 at the rate of 10,000 persons per day, mm. per day. So that means that baby boomers are exiting the workforce and millennials are on the rise. And so if we don't learn how to connect and relate and encourage and support them, uh, we're gonna be in trouble. And so that's why I love the work that Dr. Nick does, I can't wait to turn her loose so that our audience can get to understand the brilliance that she brings to the table. Well, I, I can't either. Yeah, you know, um, as I had stated earlier, literally every time I do training, I have any kind of event, there is always at a minimum 
one question for a people trying to figure out how do I connect with millennials? How do I manage them? And often saying they don't understand them. So needless to say, without further ado, I think it is more than the appropriate time to turn this show over to our very own Dr. Nick. So Nicole, feel free to take it away. All right. I, I'm excited. So thank you, Angela. Thank you, Damien. Let's get right into it because we have a lot to talk about and a short period to, to do it in. And so what I'm going to kind of give you is just kind of a top down kind of an overview of millennials in the workplace and what that means for you as leaders, as business leaders, as parents. This, this teaching can go across the gamut if you deal with millennials and that generation. Because as leaders and to be an effective leaders, you have to learn how to connect. You have to learn how to engage. And as Angela pointed out earlier, now we have a generation that makes up over half of our population. So no matter where you are, if you're a business owner, if you are a leader in any capacity, you are going to have to interact with millennials. So it's imperative that we do what we can in order to be informed and to get insight and to get understanding and under, uh, knowing how to engage, how to connect, and how to truly lead millennials. So we're just going to take a, a deep dive on the characteristics of a millennial. So in order to understand how best to lead a generation, you got to know what the generation is about. What do they think? How do they move? Uh, what are some of the behaviors? So we'll talk about that. So we get a better understanding and dispel some of the myths that are out there. We're also going to talk about millennials in the workplace and what is it that they want and what is it that they need and how can we lead them differently from other generations. And then I'm going to give you five engaging points to help you think about how effective you are in bridging the gap and leading our millennial generation. So just to let me back up for those that don't know uh, who I am. My name is Dr. Nicole Rankin. I am a certified speaker teacher coach with the John Maxwell team, and I am the CEO of the Cole Academy of Personal Growth. And we're a training and development company where we work with students and helping them with their personal growth and development, helping them to increase the soft skills that they need for success, including self-awareness, self esteem, social awareness, relationship management, time management, goal setting. So all of these things that we work for. And as I was working a lot with our, our students and millennials and our Gen Zs, what I found was that in working with the student educational leaders that serve them, there was a gap, right? They didn't know how to interact. They didn't know how to connect. And they will always ask me questions. And as a person that loves the kids and love, have a passion and heart for youth development, this is something that naturally comes um, with a connection with them. But what I realized as Generation Xers, as baby boomers and, and older, there is a, a gap that we need to fill to bridge the gap between that generation to our millennials. So having the ability to travel across the country, uh, training young people to be better leaders, to increase their awareness, to truly see, own, and achieve their dreams, I have the opportunity to do a lot of work with um, our educators, our counselors, our admin administrators. And it's interesting that recently I was asked by two leaders in the blue collar uh, industry, and they are leaders, uh, business owners of the blue collar nation. And what they were telling me, they reached out to me because they were familiar with the work that I did, and they said they need help. So they have an, they're in an industry with the technology industry and the technical industry where the majority of people are 
baby boomers and beyond. So now you have an entire gap of generation that they didn't know how to connect with millennials. They didn't know how to pass the torch, as you said, as leaders, because as leaders, our, our, our job is to teach and, and build other leaders, right? So they were having a problem connecting. So I was able to come in and, and help them and have that conversation and to help them change their mindset, because a lot of this is all a mindset shift, because millennials are aren't bad. <laughs> we hear a lot of things about uh, negative things about this ge whole generation, but we have to know how to best lead them. And that's what's going to make the difference. So let's take a look at the different generations that we have. We have a silent generation, our baby boomers, our generation Xers, and then our Generation Y or our millennials. And our millennials are born between 1981 and 1996. Then we have our Gen Zers coming in and then our, our out Generation Alphas that were born after 2010. Now, when we look at generations, each generation has their own characteristic. They have their own um, historical influences that kind of shape the culture and kind of um, determines their behavior. So when we think about millennials, millennials uh, have experienced terrorist attacks. They've gone through uh, September 11th. They've gone through the Enron Corporation scandals. They are a generation that is born into technology, which is an integral part of, of their being. Uh, their parents are usually their friends, right? Um, this is the first generation of children. They have schedules. They have core values of high morals. They're more self-confident. They're very tech savvy, very optimistic. And we're seeing that this generation, they're, they're very frugal. But another thing to think about is their preferred work environment, which is totally different from the generations before. So, you know, Google is my friend and and as as with millennials and our Gen Zers they they're information driven driven. So when thinking about millennials I said, well, let me just see what is out there. So I went to Google and I found put in millennials are. And once you put in millennials are, this is what comes up. Millennials are lazy. Millennials are screwed. Millennials are entitled, right? So all of these negative connotations about this entire generation is what's out there and what's perpetuated about the behavior of this generation. So I want to challenge, and when I go out to teach and train leaders who lead millennials, I, I put out this challenge that it's not our, res our responsibility to accept the stereotypes that are out there, but it's our responsibility as leaders to lead our millennials the way they need to be led. See, we have to change our mindset. We have to change our attitude that in order to get a different result, we as leaders have to do something different. So in thinking about that, what do we do? It's going to take time. It's going to take an attitude shift. It's going to take getting out our comfort zone. It's going to take doing things that we don't normally do in order to lead this generation in a different way. So thinking about millennials, they have a shorter attention span. Now, research shows that millennials' attention span is 11 seconds. So think about that. 11 seconds you have to grab their attention, to, to tell them some information before their mind is going to uh, something else. And the statistics of that for what Gen Zers, that generation coming up after millennials, is even shorter. They move to eight seconds of an attention span. So just think about that. So we're getting in, in a generation, we're moving from attention span of 11 seconds to eight seconds. So as leaders of these this generation, we have to keep that in mind. So they prefer interactive and collaborative learning. So millennials are all about community and teamwork. They like a lot of project driven. So a lot of interaction and interface with them is what they need. And they like comfortable environments because, and they're also comfortable with technology. When you think about technology, 
over 90% 90, 90 of them are on social media. Uh, over 75% of them have smartphones. When they multitask, they're looking at about two screens at a time. So here you have their information driven, right? So they're, they're automatically wanting to have that instant gratification because they have information at their fingertips, right? So anything they want to know, questions they want to ask and want answers to, they all they do is go and find it. So thinking about this and why this is important to understand about millennials, I remember when I was growing up as, as a young child and if and there was an adult that told me to do something or uh, showed me something and wanted me to do something, the last thing that I need to do is question and ask why. <laughs> because there were two responses that was going to happen. Either I was going to get the response because I said so, or I was going to get another response, right? <laughs> if you question why. But millennials are so different, right? They are uh, information seekers. So you may have millennials in your household or on your team and they always question, well, why do we have to do that? What is the reason for that? And in your mind, you may think that this is a sign of disrespect or they're, they're being disobedient or they don't want to do the work, but it's just a matter of understanding the culture and the need for information. So thinking about that as leaders, now we know how we can better lead them because understanding this, that they're driven by instant gratification. Also, um, informal and stimulating environments, right? They always have to be engaging, always have to be interactive, and they prefer casual and friendly relationships and are often well-rounded. So some alarming statistics that are imperative to understand about millennials in the workforce. You know, Angela talked about the that they make up the bulk of the population, but they are already the largest segment in the workforce, right? In about two years, they'll make half of the workforce. And by 2030, it is said that 70% of the job force is going to be made up of millennials. But what we're finding is that this is a generation that's least engaged in the workforce. We can say about 29% are engaged while 55% are not even engaged in the work that they're doing. And 16% are actively disengaged, right? So 55% of millennials are, are not even engaged in the work they're doing. They change jobs often. Uh, so they're always switching their job hopping. 21% uh, of millennials report switching uh, jobs within a year of getting the jobs, right? So they want the opportunities, but they're looking and they're searching for that special place that's going to give them the things that they need. And all of this, the ramifications of this, millennial turnover is so high that it's costing the U.S. economy an estimated $30.5 billion annually. So just think about that. You have a whole generation that's looking and searching for a specific environment in order to thrive. And as leaders, right, as their leaders, we are trying to lead them the way we want to lead, or we're not being open to how they want to lead, or we just categorize them as lazy, or categorize them as entitled, or categorize them as screw. So this is causing us the need, as Damien said earlier, that we have to change because our whole culture is going to change. And if we don't change the way we look at the, the things, the things we look at will change, right? So this is the time as leaders of millennials and even going into our Gen Z -er, that we have to force foster that time of change and learning and investing in the time to grow ourselves as leaders to understand this generation and understand how to best lead them in the way they need to be led. So let's talk, what do they want, right? What do they want in an environment? What do they want? They want flexible hours. You know, millennials, they, they like to be at the coffee shops. They like to, you, you'll see them with their computers working. They like the relaxed environment, the flexible hours. So thinking if you are a, a business leader and you have millennials on your team, now this is the opportunity. This may, you may not be able to have flexible hours, but can you, uh, 
uh, look at your work processes and look at your operations and figure out how can you bring in some flexibility, right? How can you bring it and not be so rigid? You know, there was a time in, in Generation X and Baby Boomers where we worked from nine to five or 10 to four or, or whatever the time is. And that's what we did. We went to work and that was it and then went home. But millennials are totally different. They want to be a part of a bigger picture. They want to be a part of uh, knowing that they have purpose in what they're doing. They want to make sure that they are in an alignment with the values that they have. So they want to have collaborative uh, workplace. You know, they want to work for people that inspire them, that, that interact with them, that helps them to get from where they are to where they want to be, right? They want to have a sense of belonging, a part of a team, belonging, a part of an organization. They want to have a bigger meaning and a bigger picture into what they're doing, right? And this requires regular feedback. They thrive on the feedback. So they're information given, they're, they're information seeking. So as leaders, we have to continually have that interface and have that interaction with them to give them feedbacks, to give them training, to give them um, the, the, the care and the thought and the push and the inspiration that they need to thrive. And they want to learn, right? They, you know, they, the characteristics said that they le they're lazy and, and they're entitled, but they want to learn, right? And it's just how to do it. They want to learn. They want to grow. They want to get to the next level in life. They are purpose driven, right? So they're looking for to fulfill a greater purpose in life. So as leaders, we have to think about all of this when we are thinking about leading this generation that is now uh, over 50% 50, 50 of our population. So we have to change in, or, in order and be the change that we want to see. So in order to lead them, we have to think about what is it that we're going to do and how are we going to do it? So I'm just going to give you, uh, I wish I had time to go into depth, but five, five strategies and five things that you can think about as a leader and ask yourself, are you doing these things? And if not, how you can do them better. And the first thing, number one is to foster. You want to foster a work culture of change. Now, keep in mind, we know that leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less, right? But influence is all about connecting, right? So having the attitude that you are going to be open to change is going to be critical in leading our millennials. So they need to know that you're open to change. They need to know that they have a platform where their voices can be heard, where their ideas can be heard, where their, 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 their feelings and their thoughts can be heard, and they want to be a part. So Again, it's a shift in, in our, our workforce as we know it today, right? Because now we had usually have the thought process that we did not mix business with pleasure. But now we have a whole generation where that those, those lines are, are blurred and now they're wanting to merge that, right? So do you have a, a work, a culture of change? Are you open? To, to that change? Are you open to millennials? Are you open to what they have to say? Are you giving them a platform to voice their ideas? And I we can go into this and I, we have tools and strategies in order to do that, but I'm going to the next one. The next one is implement. You wanna implement opportunities for ongoing learning. And this is going to be important because millennials thrive in an environment and they need direction and they want direction. I um. I recently uh, published a journal uh, called Adulting in My Purpose. And a part of that journal is about helping them with their personal growth and development. And so what I've been doing is leading small groups of millennial through the journal. And you will be amazed of the, the desire and the thirst that they have for direction and the desire and the thirst that they have for guidance. They want to be led. Right. So as leaders, we have to step up and understanding what is it they want and implementing opportunities for them to grow and for them to learn. Also, embracing the digital world. I know this is hard for some, <laughs> especially some it's some of our, our, our Gen Xers, our baby boomers and beyond. This can be challenging. Right. But if you're leading an entire generation that is technically savvy and all they know is technology, you're going to have to embrace that technology and, and that digital world, whether it be um, 
using uh, text messages. That's the that's the top of, of their list and communication, whether it be group messages, other apps that are available, uh, but embracing uh, social media platforms as well, but embracing that in digital world because that is the way they connect and that is the way they like to communicate. So that again is going to cause us to have to change, right? But this is a whole culture shift and a mindset shift. Next, increasing internal communication. You have to learn that we have to connect and millennials want you to collect connect on a personal level right they say that they don't people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care and this is so true with this generation before you can lead them anywhere they're want, they're wanting to know that you care about them you care about who they are you care about their personal lives you care about the direction their lives are are, are going be a personal and professional and you're providing resources to help them get there and increasing that communication and that feedback so whether it's it's meeting with them, interacting with them on a data basis, um, having a, maybe a sit down meeting weekly. So these are some of the things that I help organizations to implement and to help them with their engagement. So increasing that internal communication. And then five, connecting with to a bigger picture. Now we know, again, millennials are looking to fulfill a sense of purpose. So you have to ask yourself, does your business connect with a greater good, a common good, or is there a community goal? Is there a, a, some type of outreach or that they can be a part of, or maybe even start? So they want a professional purpose. They want a team purpose. They want a community purpose. So as leaders, we have to ask ourselves, what am I doing to connect myself and connect my millennials to that bigger picture? So we're just going to give you these five things, foster, implement, embrace, increase and connect. And these are just some simple things that you can do in order to bridge that gap and, 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 and help with that engagement piece to lead our millennials better. I, I remember when I was started uh, my speaking journey uh, with my entrepreneur journey. And when I was doing my speaking engagements, I first came in as this motivational speaker, wanting to share my success, wanting to, sh to share all my accomplishments. But what I realized when I truly started working with millennials that they could not care less about my success. They wanted to know my journey. They wanted to know how could I help them? How could I uh, share with my my failures, my obstacles, my challenges, and how my experiences can help them grow. And it's once I made that shift in my mindset and in my thinking and started to be open and started to be vulnerable and share with them these experiences of my life, that's when I started to build better connections and I was able to lead them in a better place. So as leaders, you want to ask yourself, how are you fostering those uh, environments for change? How is your attitude? How are you embracing technology? So you can better communicate with them and, and, and your communications with them. So think about all of this when you connect, because this, as we said, millennials are our future and they are future leaders. So as leaders who are leading them, we have to do our best in order to lead them a different way and lead them to greatness. So I'm excited. I hope that something was said that you can uh, implement uh, in your business and your thought process to help you become a better leader of our millennial generation. So thank you for allowing me to share that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Nick in the building, everybody. <laughs> uh, I knew you wouldn't disappoint, but wow. Okay, let me get awesome. me back together because I don't even know where to start. Nicole, first, let me just say it is an honor and a privilege to work side by side with you, but I can already see why it is your community and your programs are thriving the way they are. I mean, the content you just laid out, number one, thank you, because I'm sure people pay you a nice penny to have you come in and share this information with them. And for our BEI audience, they had an opportunity to hear it on our show tonight. So thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, let's, you know, I know I have some questions, Damien, I'm sure you do too. So why don't you go I first do. and, you know, let's dissect. Dr. Nicole, is that okay if we ask you a few absolutely, questions? Absolutely, absolutely. So I was feverishly taking notes. I'm going to have to listen to the replay. By the way, guys, the replay comes on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so <laughs> shameless plug. <laughs> so, so Dr. Nick, um, yeah. talk to me about some of the, because we know that, that there is a core level of resistance to millennials, because as you shared, there are all kinds of labels that are placed on millennials. What yeah. are some of the areas of resistance that you see as from Gen X and baby boomers about bracing, embracing uh, millennials? Oh, that's, that is a great question because uh, there is, there is lots of resistance and, you know, people don't like change, right? You know, we can, we, we, we can all say that as anybody change with change comes resistance uh, with change comes tension, but it's a idea of changing the mindset. So what I, um, can you all hear me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Just making sure. So what I experience a lot of times is when I'm doing, uh, working with the Gen Xers and the baby boomers, it's a, it's a thought that I'm the leader there to do what I say. I'm the boss and they need to listen to me. So here I am telling them and trying to help them shift that mindset. And you can feel the tension in the room, right? So the hands are crossed. I'm not doing that. I'm the boss. I'm the leader. I'm the educator. I have my degrees. And there's the students. They're supposed to learn from me. So now it's a, it's a mindset shift. So if we, if we continue on that path, imagine where we're going to be, right? If we as leaders continue on with that me mindset, rather than shift into the we mindset, right? And being, doing what we need to, to lead the generation, think of where we're going to be. We're going to, that, that gap that's already there is going to expand, right? So that is a, a, a lot of what I face in that, that me leadership mindset or that I leadership and, and I'm the boss leadership and they are, they are supposed to do what I say. So it's 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 that struggle to help kind of kind of change and massage that um, that that mindset and that attitude. Good stuff. Yeah, it is. So I usually I, get a few by the end of end of the workshops. <laughs> <laughs> so that's always good. So I I know I should only be asking one question, but I'm gonna try to squeeze two in here really quick. Okay. Yes. So the first one is. Okay, I'm a parent of a millennial. Mm -hmm. So would you say the same um, like key points in general, I know some of them are a little different, that you gave for managers mm -hmm. and leaders in order to connect with millennials would be similar to us as parents in doing the same thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I said this earlier that these things can go across the board. Even as a parent, it's all about engagement. Right. And I said, made the, the uh, comment about when I was a child, there are certain things that you did not do. Right. There are certain things that you did not ask parents or, you know, ask an adult if they said it, you did it. Right. But now we have a shift. So parents need to understand that it's not that their child is being disrespectful. It's not that their child is not wanting to do what you want to say, but it's just how they process and the culture that they have grown up in. It's demanding that we lead them different. So even as a parent, you want to foster an environment for change. Give your child the opportunity to express themselves. Give them, your give them the opportunity to, to share their ideas, to share their thoughts without judgment. You know, without judgment, give them that platform and that opportunity and then have that dialogue. It may be that, you know, what I say goes, but you do want to have that opportunity to give them that voice because they want to be respected. They want to be heard. And the same thing of, you know, that frequent connection and understanding that even as a parent, 
sometimes you got to share yourself, right? A lot of times when we were growing up, as, as especially in our culture, there's a lot of things that we don't talk about. And definitely there's a lot of things we don't tell our children. But as working with millennials and even uh, raising millennials, they need to see different. They need to see that their parents are, you know, make mistakes and can overcome mistakes. They need to see that their parents can go through challenges and, and face adversity, but come through victoriously, right? A lot of times we wanted to not show that side of us. And in my mind, I thought my parents didn't do anything. They were the perfect people. But again, as I got older, we knew better, right? And we learned different things. So as now growing up, Right. As as raising millennials, we want to be a little bit more uh, open and more more vulnerable with the experience that we have because they're learning and they need that process. And a lot of times the millennials that I work with, that's the one thing that they said. They, they feel so much pressure that they have to be perfect because mm. of their parents or they feel that, you know, there's so much pressure from family and society for them to be this perfect being. So in their mind, they have this, this pressure and that's when they fall into depression and, and suicidal thoughts. And now you're seeing these, you know, they're, they're, the low self-esteem and lack of confidence. So all of these emotions breeds out of that. So as, as parents, as leaders, when we take that veil off and they can see, wow, my mom is a regular person, too, and she has been through some things, but she overcame that. That means I can do this, too. Now it's a different thought process. Right. So now they can they can be more prepared and be more equipped in the world when they now face some of the similar challenges, when they face some of the similar adversities, they can move forward with the grit and with the, the fortitude that they need for success. Wow. Well, uh mm -hmm. You gave me a lot to think about. And <laughs> I, I will say it's interesting because some of the words you even said and used, I've heard as a parent, if I'm just fully transparent, you know, expressed mm -hmm. and hearing it in that context just really helps me. So thank you so much. Damien, I'll give you the last question before we wrap up. So um, you really kind of hit my last question. Well, then I have another one. So. <laughs> 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 Let me give you the time back because I'm thinking about the conversations I've had with my son because I have a millennial son too. And it's just like, wow, you just hit me in the face. So let yeah. me just um, get some ice for my lip here. <laughs> Angela, ask your question. So, you know, being BEI, we're, we're, we, we talk about entrepreneurship all the time. Yeah. One of the other things that I'm noticing is this generation of millennials are very um, entrepreneurial uh, in their thinking. And I was just wondering, had you noticed that as well? Yes, a great question. And absolutely, we're seeing a large influx of millennials wanting to go into entrepreneurship. Reason being is because they can't find that right environment in the workplace, mm -hmm. right? So they're going to the workplace looking for this ideal environment that is conducive for them, but they're not finding it. So now it's like, well, if I can't find it, I'm going to create it for myself. Mm -hmm. So they're wanting the freedom. They're wanting the flexible hours. They're wanting to have control of their own destiny. They're wanting to be able to, to manifest their purpose and, and be connected to a bigger, bigger, um, bigger, bigger picture and bigger, bigger thing than they are. So when they go into these work environments that are rigid, that are routine, that are monotonous, they can't fit. It's like fitting a, a square, square peg into a round hole. So now that they're, they're just saying, you know what, I'm just going to create my own. I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to, you know, we do, we see a lot of millennials in trading and doing these things that they're starting their businesses. So a lot of uh, millennials want, want to define their own freedom and destiny. So that is the result of that. Awesome. Thank you. Look, Nicole. <laughs> I Great just have to. Awesome. I'm, I'm glad you, you guys were able to get some value and some nuggets from that. Awesome. Well, well, now let me, um, I actually have my, can you guys see it? My adulting and my purpose, the journal. 
So for those of you, now I bought this for my daughter. I have yet to send it to her. <laughs> <laughs> but this journal is one of Dr. Nicole's. Uh, it looks like I froze. So that's, you know, the, the power for the, the, you know, course, right? Yeah. But it, it, it looks like, um, so for those of you who have young millennials or millennials period, or you're a millennial and you're interested in getting this journal for yourself, the link to how you can acquire the Adulting in My Purpose journal should be in the comments below. Um, but it is for the purposes of this discussion. You can purchase it on Amazon. And again, it's titled Adulting in My Purpose. In addition to that, Dr. Nicole has an Adulting in My Purpose course. So again, if you know a millennial who is interested Okay, I'm a back. <laughs> so if yeah, you know me, you, I tell you, this internet is something else, right? You got to like live TV. But um, if you know a millennial who is interested in taking a course and growing themselves as a young adult, because personal growth is, as Dr. Nicole stated, really important. They can also enroll in Dr. Nicole's course, and that's titled Adulting in My Purpose, a course. Now, if you, your organization is looking to partner with Dr. Nicole to have her come in and speak to your leadership and or to work with the millennials in your organization, feel free to reach out to her as well. Our Facebook is Dr. Nicole Rankin, R-A-N-K-I-N-E. You see her, uh, those links there. So again, the, the, the journal is available on Amazon. And so as we get ready to wrap, wrap up, you know, Damien, I think you, you had mentioned, you know, again, Nicole's five key points. And so we just want to go over them again very quickly. Foster a culture of change was number one. Number two, implement opportunities for ongoing learning. Three, embrace the digital world. Four, increase internal communications, and then five, connect to a bigger picture. And so again, we need to step up, those of us who are not millennials, adjust and figure out how to have a harmonious relationship, begin to view millennials in a positive light and use our influence, right, to make a difference in a positive way. So thank you again, Nicole. Damien, any, mm -hmm. any final words before we sign off tonight? Yes. Yeah, so um, here, here's what I'll say. Um, Nicole, you've made me realize that I need to have another conversation with my son because <laughs> so much of, so, you know, so much of what you said made so much sense. And I, I was literally replaying the conversations um, that, that my son would, some of the, some of the difficult conversations that we would have. Mm -hmm. And it just makes sense because when he was saying, that, you know, I feel like I'm under so much pressure. And I'm just like, what kind of pressure, you know? Um, so, but I get it now. I, I, I get it. I get the whole, you've put it in perspective. So, so thank you for that. And, uh, and so, so guys, be sure to share this, this video and start a watch party because I guarantee you, you know, some people in your life that have millennials and you know, some people that employ millennials and this will help them and it will help the millennials to be better understood. So let's get this message out that Dr. Nicole has shared with us tonight and be sure to support her body of work, adulting in my purpose, go ahead and buy the book and buy, don't even buy it for just yourself, buy it and send it to the millennials that you know, because this will help them with their journey of self-discovery. So please, please, please support her work. It is incredible stuff. And, uh, and, and you got to experience her brilliance firsthand. Thank you. Dr. Dr. Nicole, you got any final words before we sign off? Well, I, I am just uh, excited. I'm always excited to share my passion and um, my gifting and love teaching and talking about millennials and loving the aha moments. Even, you know, as you're thinking about your, your, your children and things that you said, those are the things that I love to do. So thank you for the opportunity to share um, my gifting with the BEI uh, family and uh, Empower Living family. So I just wanted to say thank you. That's all. So as a reminder, we want to again encourage you guys to follow the EL Network and its programming 
I have found it to be very instrumental in helping me grow being a part of this community. And we hope that it will be beneficial to you too. Now, as a reminder, the candle lighting is up next at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So again, thank you so much for watching the Black Entrepreneurs Institute show. And again, if you're looking to grow in your knowledge, awareness, and leadership of millennials, or you're a millennial yourself looking to become a part of a community of like-minded growth-oriented peers, again, check out the links below to get connected with Dr. Nicole. So thank you, everyone. Again, our replay, as Damien said, plays Sunday at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And we, you can find us here every Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Empowered Living Network. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Roddy and Paul. Take care. Stay safe. And remember, you should always be elevating both your mindset and your money. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.